Hey there, people. So today I'm going to show you something very interesting, which is how to install a dedicated server for many different games via uh, Steam, Steam Command, the command line utility, actually two different ways, an easy way and the command line, Steam Command way, on three different platforms, Windows, Mac, oops, Mac, and Linux. So I'm going to show you all three platforms, how to do that. But first, I will show you the easy way, which may or may not work depending on the game, which is in the Steam client itself. If you go under library and tools, you'll see there's all kinds of stuff available here. And depending on which game you're looking for, there may be a dedicated server available right here. So if you're just uh, kind of playing around, you're new to this, maybe uh, getting started, this might be an easier way to do it. You can just install it via the Steam client and uh, basically it'll show up in your library at that point and you'll be able to you know hit the sort of play button for your dedicated server that's pretty basic though so what we're going to do is uh, show you the more complicated way uh, which is the steam command client and it depends on your platform how uh, you need to install that I'm gonna start with Windows of course you don't want to use XP anymore but I had an extra copy kicking around so uh, that's what I'm using here um, you're going to want to, first of all, download, uh, if you're using Windows, you'll need the Steam command Windows executable. I've just uh, bookmarked it in crappy old Internet Explorer here. So you can get that at that link, media.steampower.com slash installer slash steam command dot zip. I will, uh, of course, put a bunch of links in the description as well for uh, the steps, as well as the list of servers that you can uh, do with this with. So you're just going to need to save that. Um, zip file and it's going to take a second to download of course uh, there we go and we can open the folder you'll want to unblock that right click properties unblock that applies more or less to all versions of Windows you'll want to then extract that somewhere um, I would suggest somewhere that you can work with easily <laughs> so I'm gonna put that right there and there we go. Now you can just simply double click to run that, but I would suggest that you use your uh, command prompt. And you're going to want, the, want to run the executable. It's going to do its little updates and stuff. And it's got to download a little bit. Um, so then basically you're going to be logging into the Steam command utility. It actually logs into the Steam service. Then you download the appropriate thing. Um, let me just bring up my notes on that. So here we go. So first of all, it depends on the game whether you can log in anonymously or not. Uh, you may need to use your accounts for certain games. Most games you're going to want to log in anonymously. Uh, of course, you don't want... Um, your server using your Steam account if you can avoid it. So log in anonymous. Occasionally you may need an, to use your account and or actually own the game. It's usually quicker. <laughs> Then you're going to want to set a uh, folder. That's the force install dir command. So force install dir. Uh, let's say I'm going to do a gmod uh, server. So c slash gmod. Um, now I've got a note there. Uh, I'll get to that later. Now um, you're going to want to use the app update validate command. So app update. And you're going to need here the uh, Steam ID of the dedicated server, not the game itself, the actual server module ID. So for Gmod, that's 4020. And then validate. And this is going to be the same, actually. These steps are going to be the same if you later need to update your server, if you're running your dedicated server and it gives you a little message that your server needs to be updated. Just shut down the server, run these same commands as if you were installing it fresh. Um, of course, point it at the existing server. And when you do that uh, app update validate, it will basically update the, the game files. And that's basically it. It's now downloading the server. We'll get to that in a minute. In the meantime, I'll show you how to do it on the other platforms. 
It's uh, similar, but a little different. So let's uh, hop over to our Mac OS. Here you're going to want to open a terminal as well. And the commands for Mac OS are, first of all, you're going to want to uh, make it a, a folder again. So make dir, this is your uh, the tilde for your user folder. And then uh, steam command is, you can make a different folder if you want. Um, and then you're going to want to switch to that folder. Yeah, okay, cd slash. There we go. And then there's a command to actually download this curl. Again, it's available from the Steam uh, website via this command. Client, installer, Steam, command, OSX tar.gz there we go so it's going to download that steam command itself is very small so that shouldn't take long and then once that downloads you're going to need to untar that archive that's an archive of course gzip and if you're not comfortable using the command line i mean this is a good way to get started but uh you're going to want to learn a little bit about using command lines before you really get serious about doing dedicated servers, of course. All right, so now we have see steam command dot sh. So you do dot slash steam command, if I can spell dot sh to run that. And again, from there, it's basically the same. It's going to download steam command and you're going to be able to log in anonymous, blah, 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 same steps. So again, log in anonymous, force installer, app update with the uh, app ID number for the dedicated server you want, and validate. So over on Linux, uh, similar idea. Um, it's best if you get it from the repositories for your distribution. So this is a variant of uh, Ubuntu, actually, Zubuntu with the XFCE window manager. So you're going to want to sudo apt get install steam command. Uh, if you're on Red Hat or CentOS, of course, you use yum. If you're on Arch Linux, Arch Linux, uh, Pacman, etc. So you'll have to put in your password. And it's downloading pretty quickly. <laughs> oh, and here we are. They give you a license agreement. Interesting. <laughs> now, I have actually done this. Uh, I, I do run my servers on Linux. If you're serious about running a, a server, I do recommend Linux for that. Uh, but of course, that's a whole other thing to get used to. So the only thing about that is I'm not sure where it installed it. <laughs> But according to the instructions I'm looking at, I did it manually when I installed my own server on Linux. So this is, uh, I didn't use the repository. There we go. Okay, so again, dot slash steam command. So you have to link it, um, the executable, if you get it from the repository. But it will download all the dependencies for you. If you do it manually, um, you'll need to, of course, make sure you have all the right dependencies and stuff installed as well. Again, I will have links. <laughs> there we go. It, and if you do it manually, it's going to be dot slash steam command dot sh like it was on Mac. So again, there we go. It's installing. Um, and from there, it's basically the same. So here we go. See, I'm in the steam, steam uh, client. So I'll go back to Windows. Let's see if that's downloaded. No, nope, still downloading. Just over 50%. <laughs> So we've been, we've installed Steam command 
almost on three platforms, just like that. And basically, once you've got the Steam command utility, um, you just need to install, as I showed you, the, the particular dedicated server you want. You can, of course, install more than one. Um, different games are going to require different configurations and things like that. You'll want to put in your custom content. Any, say, uh, for Source Engine games, you'll want um, VPKs in your add-ons folder, that kind of stuff. Uh, and it's worth mentioning that this is not only for Source Engine games. This does apply to games such as CSGO, Gmod, um, Killing Floor 2, Left 4 Dead 2, Team Fortress 2, uh, but it also applies to like Arc. Um, on Linux, you can actually install the Terraria server this way. That's, again, not how I did mine. <laughs> but there's a huge list. It's literally dozens and dozens of games that you can install this way, uh, dedicated servers for them. Again, I will send you uh, the link well i'll put the link in the description for all the different games that you can do this way the specifics of how you actually um, then run the server basically it's going to create a folder <clears throat> well the folder that you told it um, within that folder it is going to uh, install all the files for the game including an executable for the dedicated server for source engine games that's usually source ds um, which is the dedicated server, you might need to put in some parameters for source DS. Uh, well, I'll show you when, when Gmod is uh, downloaded there. Um, for source DS, you have to run source DS and then dash game with the name of the game usually. And any additional parameters you like. You can, of course, script all kinds of things. You can, uh, you know, this whole series of steps here to uh, install or update. You can put that in a script um, and then run uh, Steam command plus uh, let's see, where'd I put that? <laughs> there's a, there's a parameter anyway to, uh, to say plus, I think it might be plus script. Um, make it nice and simple with that as the, that you can do as a text file and just give it as a parameter to steam command to update your server that way. Um, yeah, Gmod's coming. Okay. So, uh, so again, you're, you're going to need to uh, put in whatever else you need. Also, something that I ran into when I installed a Left 4 Dead 2 server on Linux, which probably applies to other uh, maybe Source Engine games as well, is that I actually, because I had the Steam client installed on Linux, you know, for playing games, I had to actually point this force installer. Um, that's why I have this note. If using full Steam, that means Steam client, uh, then you you should put this installer under your actual Steam install folder, um, and then under in there eventually you have Steam apps and then common and put your folder for your server underneath the common folder. Um, so I had like Steam apps slash common slash L4D2 server, for instance. Um, you'll want to do that because that's where steam puts your games of course is under the common folder you'll have all your game folders under there and uh, i found that if i tried to install it in a separate folder from the steam folder um it was asking me to log into steam every time i ran my server and of course that's uh, annoying at best so i ended up having to move it underneath my steam folder and that resolved that issue that was on linux hopefully it doesn't happen on the other platforms but in case it does there you go that's how to solve it uh, again, under uh, Linux, let me switch over to that. There we go. I do have the uh, Steam client installed here as well. Um, so actually the folder for that is your user folder slash uh, dot Steam. Uh, yeah, maybe that's not right in the terminal. So if you go to your home folder and then in there it's dot Steam. So again, um, now that's interesting. Yeah, I guess I haven't actually installed any games, so maybe it doesn't have all the folders. <laughs> but uh, it should have folders in, in under there. Oh, yeah, Steam. Okay, there we go. It's under Steam and then Steam Apps and Common. So I had to tell it, uh, yeah, I did install Terai on here at one point. Um, so I had to tell it under, you know, my user is test. So home, username, dot steam, steam, steam apps, common, and then put the folder for the game server under that if you have the client installed as well, uh, just so you avoid that having to log into Steam every time you run your uh, server issue. Okay, so here we go. I've got uh, Gmod fully installed. Once the game is installed, again, that was the app update 
app number validate once that's all finished you just quit and it takes a second <laughs> and uh, here we go so I installed that under um, C drive Gmod for my Gmod server and there we are it's source DS as I say so to run that now again I recommend doing it from the command line you can make a batch file whatever you like uh, if you're on Windows batch fly, file uh, etc you can make a shell script under the other two um, so you're going to want to go under that folder source ds dot exe dash game uh, I think it's gmod let's see what happens <laughs> Yeah, maybe it doesn't uh, recognize that. Oh, there we are. Yep, no, it did. <laughs> I didn't check if that was the command line for that. Um, but there you go, game, Gary's Mod, server name, you can enter your server name. Again, this kind of stuff varies depending on which game it is. Um, my Left 4 Dead 2 server, there's a, a configuration file where you had to change uh, number of players and server name and that kind of stuff. Um, but there you go. This one actually brings up a GUI. Some of them will, some of them won't. Um, I left her dead to server again, completely command line. And that's it. You just start the server. Um, you are, of course, going to need to forward the appropriate ports to your server computer. If you have a, a router or uh, even just on the firewall on the machine itself, if you're directly connected to the internet, which is a terrible idea. <laughs> if you have a router with a firewall, you're going to want to forward the ports to that machine. You may have to open it on the machine itself as well and or. Uh, and that's basically it. You should have your server up and running. So uh, I recommend you test it out locally first. Um, try joining your own server before opening all the ports. Make sure you got everything configured, of course. And uh, yeah, happy playing. <laughs> um, of course, look into uh, the specific game that you want to start a server for. Find out the right settings, where to set the right settings, where to put your uh, data files, any of your custom content, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not going to try to get into all that for every single game right now, but there you go. That's the idea. That's how you make a server. Hope you liked the video. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know if you have any questions, if, uh, if there's anything else you'd like to see, and otherwise I will see you next time. Links will be in the um, description. Bye for now.